e chivi tu ci chawe, tu no nyo mukama, tu yo ke twa ni niza, wabula kwa zinga zi. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Second Sunday of Advent. Gathered on this second Sunday of Advent, we want to get the reassurance of the Lord that God is making things new. Looking at what we are going through, looking at the COVID-19 surrounding us, God is working out something. Let us be patient. Let us wait for his work plan, for his special intervention into our lives. We want to present today in this Eucharistic celebration the intentions brought before us, the intention of um, Miriam Mumba, a diplomat in uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, asking for protection and good health for our family. The intentions of um, Ghana, the country of Ghana that is going for elections, electing their president tomorrow, the, the 7th of, of, of December, that the Lord may be with the country of Ghana um, to have peaceful and just elections because they are also electing 275 parliamentarians uh, tomorrow itself, so it's presidential and parliamentary elections. We pray for Ghana. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our failures. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You live pleading for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, May no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
our first reading is taken from prophet Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1 to 5 and then 9 to 11 comfort comfort my people says your God speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended that our iniquity is pardoned that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins a voice cries in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord make straight in the desert a highway for our God every valley shall be a, shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low the uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain and the glory of the lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the lord has spoken Get you up, a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd and he will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. The word of the Lord. Our response or your psalm, the response is, let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what the Lord God has to say. He speaks of peace for his people, and is faithful. His salvation is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Merciful love and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Also the Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him and guide his steps on the way. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Our second reading is taken from second book of Peter, Chapter 3, verse 8 to 14. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and the thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise as some count slowness, but is forbearing towards you. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and when, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and the works that are upon it will be burnt up. 
Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of persons ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be kindled and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But according to his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you wait for these, be zealous to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Prepare the way of the Lord and make straight his paths. Hallelujah, all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 1 verse 1 to 8. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before you, before your face, who shall prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his path straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And there went out of him, and there went out to him all the country of Judea and all the people of Jerusalem, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild, wild honey. And he preached saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful message we have. A message of hope on this second Sunday of Advent in this war we are fighting against COVID-19. It is so fitting. I'm telling you, I've never enjoyed Advent as I am enjoying it now. It is making more sense. It is making a lot of sense now. Because like the Israelites in the first reading of today, and like the community of Peter, the Petrine community in the second reading of today, Impatience had grown among the people. For the Israelites who were in exile, after so many years, close to 40 years in exile, they became impatient and started thinking nothing is going to change. God is not going to work on their situation. They were stuck. They were in the midst of confusion. And they thought... 
their plight will never be attended to. They were going to be the condemned for life. And at a time when they thought nothing was going to come from the mouth of the Lord, prophet Isaiah, Deutero Isaiah, second Isaiah, comes with the message of hope. Come forward, my people. Come forward, my people. Come forward, them, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Jerusalem that felt neglected. The, the, the city that felt God had abandoned that city. That our warfare is ended. Imagine staying in COVID-19 situation for over 10 years, for over 40 years. You have been waging a war, losing so many people, and a lot of things have happened. And then the Lord comes to you that your warfare is ended. That whatever confusion you caused because of the wrong alliances, whatever situation that led you to that the warfare is ended the lord the mighty warrior has ended the warfare and this is what we are waiting for we are waiting for god to end the warfare that we are in right now we are in a war a situation we face here at the university with, uh, with a number of cases here and there. And constantly we have to put on masks. I'm not putting on a mask now because of the mask I have to celebrate. I'm alone here. But the thing is we are in a warfare. We are fighting. And we keep asking the question, when will this end? When will we come out of this? Be patient. Our God is not deaf. Our God is not away from what we are experiencing. He is right with us. He is with us. He is walking with us. He is fighting with us. And he is going to tell us the warfare is ended. But what he is asking for is the patience that we are requested to have in the second reading of today. Where... The Peter writing this message to the Petrine community tells them, do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years are as one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think. He's not slow. No. He's working out his plan. It had to take 500 years for the promise of the Lord to be fully fulfilled for Israel when the Savior came to the people. But God fulfilled his plan. You are impatient about many things. It's not just about the situation we face of COVID-19. You are impatient even with your spouse and how he is taking long to transform in his drunkenness. You are impatient even with your state, your nation. How the nation is taking long to progress, to develop because of corruption that surrounds the leaders who are taking charge. You are impatient with your own employer. You are impatient with your own employees. When will they fall in line? When will they do the right thing? The Lord is saying, be patient. Things are going to change. Don't lose your health because of, uh, of wanting things to change right there. No, God is going to make things change in his own time. Remember, a thousand years are like a single day in the face of God. He looks at everything. He has the whole history. He has uh, the whole future in his hands. And he's looking at everything and he knows the right time when he will act. When the time is right, I will make it happen, says the Lord in chapter 62 of, of Isaiah. When the time is right, I will make it happen. He's going to make it happen. 
And we will patiently wait because we know the master has a plan. He has a master plan and we are going to patiently wait for his intervention in what we are going through. It took some time for the Lord to start acting upon Israel by sending his own son. And we see this in the gospel passage of today. The gospel passage has a lot of depth that we need to understand. Mark, the gospel we are going to take on the, in the Sundays of ordinary time in this year B, the gospel we are going to take as well uh, in these days uh, as, we, as we pass Christmas, we are going to be taking from Mark as well during the weekdays. This gospel of Mark does not begin with the infant narratives. That is why we don't read the gospel of Mark uh, during the Christmas time. No, there is nothing about gospel of Mark during Christmas tide, especially the octave, because Mark doesn't say anything about the birth of Christ. But he starts his gospel like this. In the, the beginning of the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody else started something like this who also did not start his gospel with the infant narratives. That is John. John says, in the beginning, ahe, 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 in, in Greek, ahe, meaning the, the source, Genesis, where the word Genesis comes from. Genesis, the Genesis of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. These words are drawn from the book of Genesis. This is exactly how the book of Genesis, the book about creation, starts. God is about to create. God is about to do something here. And so, Mark wants to tell us from the onset that God is rec recreating. He's recreating with what? With the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Was there any other gospel? Why should it be the gospel of Jesus Christ? Was there any other gospel? Yes, there was another gospel. Because gospel means good news. The one who brings the good tidings. There was a gospel of the emperor. Emperor Caesar who claimed, Emperor Augustus, who claimed to be the son of God. He claimed to be a God. Now, Emperor who claimed to be a God and he had messengers who would take his gospel, who would take his good news. Mark wants to tell us something here. Mark wants to say, it is the beginning, it is the creation, a start of the gospel of the real God. Not the God you have been having, not the emperor, not any human being. But the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Joshua, Christos, Joshua. Jesus in Hebrew is Joshua. So if we are to talk of uh, if we are to talk of Jesus Christ in the Hebrew form we, we would say J Joshua Christ. So Jesus is Joshua. But who is not but not the Joshua who led the people of Israel into the promised land but the Joshua the anointed one who led each one of us from the land of sin into the promised land of God's people. We have a new Joshua here. It is a gospel about the new Joshua. And this will make us understand something here. What Mark wants to tell us about the news about the Jesus Christ we are, we are referring to here is that Jesus Christ is a new Joshua. He is 
come he has come to take us out of the confusion we are living in the confusion of sin into the promised land and this will be understood when you understand also where is John baptizing John is baptizing on the other side of the Jordan if you go to the gospel of John the gospel of John explains to us the position of the baptism of John John is baptizing on the other side of the Jordan the other side of the Jordan is where Joshua reached after crossing the Jordan to go to the promised land with the people of Israel and it is on the other side of the Jordan where Jesus is baptized to say listen I'm the new Joshua I am the new Joshua yes Joshua meaning Jesus God saves the name which means God saves I am the new Joshua but my work is different from the Joshua you had the promised land I'm taking you to is the land of justice and peace is the land where God dwells the kingdom of God and this new Joshua asks us to do one thing repent move from the kingdom of darkness if you are to be part of the company of Jesus to be part of the company of the new Joshua you have to transform God is going to act on what we are facing today we know our God has no conditions but we have to transform if things are going to work out if we are going to be in that promised land if we want God to act as soon as he should act we have to transform remove all selfishness these people who came to the other side of the Jordan to be baptized were taught to repent and they repented of their sins COVID-19 is a call to repentance where we have to repent of our sin of selfishness the world has been living in individualism and selfishness for too long and repentance the call to repentance that is in this world now is that we have to move away from our selfishness if the world is to change if this COVID-19 is to end we have to think also about the health of others I know I'm found positive I know I am I'm in a situation where I see the symptoms of COVID but I don't want to protect myself and to protect other people from getting infected that is selfishness and we want to say no we are going to remove selfishness we will quarantine ourselves to make sure we don't make others also get what we have gotten and also to take care of ourselves to take care of our health to make sure that we come out of this situation selfishness has to be removed is one way we are going to repent by thinking about others when we are dealing with this problem we have to then move towards generosity knowing that this COVID-19 has affected so many people if you have lived a stingy life like uh, the way people are joking about the stingy men association of Zambia Smas, where there is a kind of stingy men association as if it is something that you can you can even pride yourself in no we have to make the generous men association of Zambia the generous men and women association of the world where we learn to think about others in everything that we do many people are suffering depravity and one way we are going to convert show repentance is by showing our generosity to the world out there God is going to act but he will act in so far as we act upon our own selfish and sinfulness upon our own selfish ways 
that the world may transform, the world may be a better world to live in. May God bless his word. My dear redeemed of God, we now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring before the Lord who promises he is going to make our warfare ended. Our intentions, praying for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the bishops, the priests, the pastors, religious men and women dedicated to bringing comfort to the lives of people that they may be heralds of the good news. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring the intentions of all the people who are going through various sufferings, especially our daily bread members, a number of them who are experiencing COVID-19, that the Lord of all strength, of all assurance, may take them out of this situation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring before the Lord the country of Ghana, preparing for elections as they go into elections tomorrow that the decision the people are going to, be, to make may be respected. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Louis, Louis, Louis Munsha, praying for the church leaders that they may lead people to Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So like I told you, I will only be reading the intentions of people who have their real names. Joyce Atto, prayer for her brother who is addicted to alcohol, that the Lord may have mercy on him. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Miriam Murray, God, we pray for a speed recovery of our dear sister Winnie Coletti Cambola and all our family and friends who are sick and in pain. Lord, hear us. Mutinta Mainza Mulenga, we pray for ourselves that the time that during we pray for ourselves that when the time comes, he may find us watchful and alert and ready for his coming. Lord, hear us. 
Mumba auxilia njuma Lord I come to you with my family for guidance and unity Lord hear us Koleti chilando praying for all the sick and the oppressed the heartbroken that God remembers them and gives them hope Lord hear us Yurita Motsi thanking God for all the answers for all answered prayers and continue to pray for my family for protection from COVID-19. Lord, hear us. According to women. Lord, graciously hear us. Lupia Mulenga, praying for her family in Mazabuka. May the Lord grant them peace and the daily bread family. Jen Apolot praying for the country of Uganda for peaceful election period. Lord, hear us. Betty Akelo, Lord, grant Johnny Messis to my husband from Cameroon back home. Lord, hear us. Margaret Kasomo, thanking God for my children and pre pre presenting them for God's blessing and protection. Lord, hear us. Michelle Mbirinyu, praying for all those who are taking their exams this month and those that are sick, that the Lord may attend to them. Lord, hear us. Martha Chimunya Kayuni, I pray for the Lord to transform us to be like him. Also pray for my daughter to pass her exam and all those who are writing their exams. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Chipo Zinomwa, I pray for my mother-in-law who is sick in hospital and all the departed souls. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grace Omondi, praying for family and frontline front workers that they may be protected from COVID-19. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Violating coma, Lord, yet 2020 has been tough for me, but God, you have been faithful to me. I thank the Lord for a new job and will forever praise your name, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask all this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, 
my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayer and offering. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come we pray to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may merit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. At the same time, in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to the world as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope and Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with our most just spouse, Joseph, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not leave us in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil 
graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with your spirit. We offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. We now make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Thank you so much for your participation and thank you for your patience. We spoke about patience. I had issues with uh, the gadget. I woke up to just an update of, uh, of a program and I just didn't know where to go and I tried to, I just had to cancel that update which, had, which was an automatic update that slowed the gadget that we are using for our own, um, our own uh, transmission. But we thank God things worked out and here we are. We keep asking God for his protection. We keep asking him to continue taking care of each one of us. To Sister Nancy Mugo, thank you for providing for us the song, uh, the, 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 the entrance song of one of um, her batchmates, a sister who gave us that, the, the sisters who gave us that entrance song, the Loreto Sisters. We continue praying for all our family members, especially our daily bread family members who are suffering from COVID-19. It is, it is something that they are coming out of. We are very sure they will come out of it. And be brave, be strong. Somebody was checked again three times, still positive. Don't worry, you are coming out of it. God is saying your warfare is ended. He's taking you out of that. You keep trusting in his love and mercy. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things that are earthly and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Voce di Maria, dentro l'anima mia, come un balsamo scende sulle ferite e le porta via. La voce di Maria, dolce melodia, che ci porta al cuore sempre di più.
Jesus.